Glycogen metabolism. Glycogen is the major storage form of carbohydrate in animals. Glycogen is present mainly in the liver and muscle with modest amount in the brain. The primary advantages of storage carbohydrates in animals are that when we require energy in terms of immediate bases, for example, like initial stages of fasting or when an individual performs strenuous muscular activity, we have to depend on storage form of energy in the body and such energy cannot be released from fat. The other major energy storage form in animals is glycogen. So once glycogen stores are depleted in the body, then only energy is derived from catabolism of fats and amino acids for the synthesis of glucose, thereby maintaining adequate glucose levels in the blood along with supplying ATP to the body needs. When there is a need, glycolysis provides a mechanism of anaerobic metabolism, especially in muscle cells that cannot get oxygen as fast as needed when a subject performs strenuous exercise. In such an instance, glycogen in the muscle provides immediate energy by glycogenolysis to produce glucose, which immediately undergoes glycolysis to provide instant energy to the exercising muscles. Here in glycogen metabolism, our topic of discussion will be glycogen synthesis, which is also called as glycogenesis, and glycogen breakdown, also known as glycogenolysis. Before we enter into the metabolic cycles, Let's have a quick review regarding differences between liver glycogen and muscle glycogen. The total glycogen content in the liver is less than 1.8 kilograms, which is highest in the muscle, about 35 kilograms. The percentage by tissue weight is highest in the liver, which is about 5, which is less in the muscle, about 0.7. Regulation of blood glucose. In the liver, it contributes to blood glucose. In the muscle, it does not directly contribute to blood glucose, but serves as a source of energy to the muscle itself. Glucose 6-phosphatase is present in the liver, but absent in the muscle. An important point to be noted here is that after 12 to 18 hours of fasting, liver glycogen is almost depleted. Glycogenesis. To understand glycogenesis properly, we must study what is glycogenin. Glycogenin. Glycogenin is a glycoprotein, which is a 37 kilo Dalton protein, which acts as a primer and glycogen synthesis, which means glycogen synthesis will not start from scratch, whereas new glucose molecules will be added to the pre-existing glycogen called as glycogen primer. And the core protein molecule in the glycogen primes is glycogenin, which is synthesized from the liver. It also acts as an autocatalyst in attaching glucose on glycogenin. Glucose molecules get attached to the hydroxyl group of tyrosine on glycogenin. Reactions of glycogenesis. The site is cytosol. The organs where it mainly takes place is the liver and muscle. The rate-limiting enzyme is glycogen synthase. Now let us concentrate on the steps of glycogen synthesis. The initial step is the synthesis of UDP glucose. Like in the initial step of glycolysis, glucose gets converted to glucose 6-phosphate by hexokinase in the muscle and glucokinase in the liver. Glucose 6-phosphate is then isomerized to glucose 1-phosphate by 
phosphoglucomutase. Glucose 1-phosphate reacts with uridine triphosphate to form UDP glucose, which is also known as uridine diphosphate glucose and pyrophosphate by the enzyme UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. UDP glucose is considered to be glucose donor for synthesis of glycogen. Initiation of glycogen synthesis. Glucose joins with UDP glucose by alpha-1,4 linkage mediated by an enzyme glycogen synthase. But glycogen synthase adds glucose residue only on the glycogen primer called glycogenin, which is pre-existing glycogen molecule. What is a glycogen primer and what is its role? Glycogen synthesis cannot start from scratch. It needs a basic molecule on which the glucose residues can be added so that the chain can get elongated. Glycogen fragments which already exist can act as this primer. In glycogen depleted condition, a protein primer called glycogenin acts as a flooring to which the glucose molecules from UDP glucose are added like bricks. During the initial additions of glucose molecule, glycogenin acts as an autocatalyst and forms the glycogen fragment on which further glucose residues are added by 1 to 4 linkage by the enzyme glycogen synthase, branching in glycogen. If glycogenesis stops with the above steps, it is expected to create a long linear molecule similar to that of starch in plant. But this is not the case. After around 11 residues, branching begins and branches provide more number of activated glucose residual ends for the UDP glucose to get attached to. This results in a highly branched, easily soluble glycogen molecule. This branching is brought about by branching enzymes called amylo alpha 1 to 4 to alpha 1 to 6 transglucosidase. The function of this enzyme is to break a fragment of glycosyl residues at the 1 to 4 linkage and attach them to another glucose molecule on the chain to form the branching points by alpha 1 to 6 linkage. This results in more number of endpoints for UDP glucose to add further glucose residues to it. Thus, branching enzymes result in extensively branched large glycogen molecule. Defect in glycogen synthesis and glycogen degradation results in accumulation of abnormal glycogen inside a cell which leads to glycogen storage disorders. One such genetic disease is glycogen storage disorder type 4 called as Anderson's disease caused by defective branching enzyme. So the glycogen formed is a linear insoluble structure that accumulates in the cells causing liver and muscle damage.